it's Lori from Laura's World. I'm very excited about tonight's episode uh, and he's already ready to come in. So I'm not gonna say a word, we're just gonna go ahead and do it. So I hope you enjoy it. So thank you again, Steve. It's, it's, it's funny cause you're like one of the first interviews I'm doing that I, I have never met you. Um, no. And the way that um, I met you was through Facebook. I saw that you had written a book and I ordered it and I have my copy here. I read it. I love it. Um, it was amazing. Absolutely. Well, thank amazing. you. Thank and I you don't so want I don't want to go into too much detail because I want people to um, go and get their copies yes. of it. Um, so I don't want to get into you know too deep into it, but I would love for you just to tell our our listeners a little something about it, and wonderful. Uh, and then we'll go yeah. from there. Let's just let it flow. No scripts, no nothing. Just oh, well, I I hate Lori. I hate scripts. It yeah. is, uh, I was actually on a radio show this morning from Vero Beach, Florida, and uh, the fella Rhett, uh, Rhett Palmer. And uh, he says, uh, he said to me yesterday, we had like a five minute pre pre conversation. Mm -hmm. And he says, I don't have any script. He says, are you comfortable with that? And I said, that's the way I love it. Uh, and we went for an hour, just questions and discussion. And yeah. Good, uh, good. You know, it's funny because I was just telling my husband the first time I had to speak at a meeting, I had written a three page letter because it was my first time. And I and I wanted to make sure that I got everything in. And of course. Um, yeah. I read I read it to my brother and he was like, Oh, it's great. He goes, Now I want you to do me a favor. And I said, What? He said, Rip it up. <laughs> Rip it up. That's a, go that's in the there, speak got. from your heart and let God do the rest. And and that's what we're doing today. Absolutely. Yes. Absolutely. So wow. thank you again. So tell us a little bit about how you got into recovery, because that's what yeah, we're all thank, in for. Of course. Thank you so much. My journey to recovery uh, was a 35 year journey. I started drinking and drugging when I was 14 and in moderation, of course, and mm -hmm. then a weekend warrior. Um, but it wasn't until the 90s um, that I my, my addiction to cocaine really took off. And with the cocaine going rampantly wild, mm -hmm. the drinking uh, grew and grew and grew. And so you much so die. that, uh, yes. And the last three years uh, of the decade of the 90s were just uh, uh, abomination. Uh, it was uh, just crazy, crazy stuff, drinking and drugging, stealing money, taking hostages, doing everything, manipulation, lying and everything. And through the grace of God, in November of uh, 2000, there was an intervention, a date that will, uh, a day of infamy for me, November 29, 2000, there was an intervention and they said, uh, Stephen, you have a serious problem, you need to go away. Mm -hmm. And as I look back on that journey from uh, 1969, 1970, up until 2000, um, it was, I was born an alcoholic and, and there was no doubt about it. I come from uh, alcoholic father, alcoholic grandfather, alcoholic grandmother. And um, so for me, it was that journey. And, and uh, thank God somebody saw me acting ir ir irregular, so to speak. And they, they uh, had the intervention. Yes. Awesome. And it's been the greatest journey yeah. in recovery. Uh, I've learned so much about who Stephen is who the people in my life are, you know, going out to make the amends when the amends were necessary and living, uh, I, you know, I have a couple of 24 hours and, and I do celebrate on an annual basis, but I celebrate every day because I live this program one day at a time. And there's a good chance, a darn good chance that I'm not going to pick up a drink or a drug today. And then we get to tomorrow. Um, I've never been the type to get caught up when people say that they have X amount of years. Mm -hmm. That's a great thing to have X amount. But if we don't have today, uh, you know, I know too many people in this program who have 
many years, but few days. Uh, and um, for me, I'd like to say that I have a few days and, you know, a couple of years. A couple of uh, years. I like that. I really do like that. Well, there was one um, particular thing in the book that I read that hit me so hard because I had a really hard time in the beginning uh, of trying to um, do this thing of recovery. And I did not, I couldn't put my finger on it, but every time I walked into a meeting, I, I was, it made me feel bad. Like I was, like I was doing something wrong. Like I did something wrong to have to deserve to go in, in, into meetings. Um, and you wrote, it's on page 230. I'm just going to read this one thing because it was like, oh my God, this was perfect. And you said for a man who had lived his life striving to be the model of perfection attendance at AA meetings meant I was weak and I'd continually be reliving where I was instead of where I was going <laughs> I'm getting choked up now and that and that when I read that I said that was it I couldn't I couldn't understand why I felt so bad going and that was the reason and once I got past that um I love to go now I love it. I don't, I, I just, I, when I walk into a meeting, I feel like I'm home. I just love it. So thank you for that because you summed it all up for me and it took 11 years. <laughs> well, th thank you, Laurie, because that's the way it was is yeah. I always saw Alcoholics Anonymous uh, as a sign of weakness. Yes. Or I saw it, I, I, I thought it was like where they teach people how to drink. So you know, instead of drinking a bottle of stuff, I was days, thinking the same thing. I'll, I'll learn how to do it in four days. So yeah. I could do that. Yes. Uh, and I love the, the program. Yeah. Uh, this past year has been very difficult because many of the meetings on Long Island yeah. have been uh, closed down, yes. so to speak. Uh, thank God for Zoom. Uh, yes. But I do love the uh, I love the one on one, you know, the personal meetings and I Zoom is a great know. alternative. Uh, yes. But meetings, it used to be I have to go to this meeting. I don't want to go to this meeting. Now I look forward to going to the meetings. Me too. Yes. yes, it's a gift. And I don't know how many I need a week. You know, do I need two? Do I need five? I don't know which one I need. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, and, you know, and some people will say, to me, geez, you've been doing it for so long. Do you still have to go to those things? And I, you know, and I was like, I, 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 I don't have to, I want to, yes. you know, I want to, I want to let everybody know that you used to be a, um, a Catholic priest. Yes. Um, I was brought up a Catholic, uh, attended every Sunday with my mom and my siblings. Um, my mom was a Sunday school teacher, so I was brought up Catholic. And um, I found it so very interesting, um, to say the least, you humanized <laughs> being a priest. Um, because I always had these ideas of uh, priests being perfect. Um, mm -hmm to let us know what we're supposed to be doing. Um, and if I did something wrong and I was in confession, I felt like less than. Um, so to hear your story, um, thank you for humanizing the priests. You're <laughs> welcome. You're human, you are human. Thank and, you. And, and we all have, we all have, we all put on our pants one leg at a time. Um, but yes, do you, do, do you, um, how long were you a priest for? I was uh, ordained a priest in 1997. Okay. And then I, 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 I was in active ministry for about five years, uh, probably about six months of that five years in rehab. Okay. Uh, three different times in rehab. And then um, I, I met somebody and uh, took a leave of absence. Okay. And I returned to the priesthood in 2010. And the next seven years in the book, they're called the rock star years. The years 2010 to 2017 were phenomenal. Uh, doing a lot of work in the world of recovery, workshops, symposiums, uh, meetings. I you know, had meetings in the church rectory. Mm -hmm. I could just walk down two flights of steps to get to, to a meeting. It was wonderful. 
Then I went to another parish. So I, I and then of course I was suspended in 2018 uh, on a uh, frivolous allegation. But I, I guess I've been, you know, uh, a priest 23 years, mm -hmm. uh, if you count from the day of ordination, always a priest in the eyes of Melchizedek. And it was a wonderful uh, ministry, uh, but I see now my, my ministry in life is helping others. And, and um, in, in, the, in the area of recovery uh, from addictions, um, it's a great gift. A great it surely is. It surely is. I know I read something um, that you missed it, you know, m missed having your own, you know, your own ministry. But, you know, you are doing you are doing God's work in another way, you know. And so what's a title? You know, you're doing you're still doing this beautiful work, you know, and I applaud you for that. You know, I really Thank do. You. I, I see it as an extension, an extension of, uh, of priesthood is, um, I think of a quote that's in the, the New Testament, uh, St. Paul, he writes and he, and he tells the people of uh, Galatia, um, the Galatians, okay, but the people of Galatia, he says to them that it's our greatest weakness will become our greatest strength. And when I look back on my addiction, it was a week. I wrote that down. I wrote oh. that down. Wow. It's highlighted. I love that. Okay. Uh, and today it is my greatest strength because I have walked the walk uh, of addiction, alcoholism. And now because of walking the walk, I can talk to talk. But I think it's a lot more than talking to talk because it's, getting other people, uh, you know, helping other people. It's all about service. Uh, yeah. And uh, my strength today is the fact that I was a drug addict. I am a drug addict. I haven't used in many years, but I still, you know, I have that core inside of me. Mm -hmm. The other thing too, I wanted just to touch base on just a little bit was, um, I know there was something that was on your on your page that you know that you feel like you walk a fine line, trying to get the word out and you know in 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 in, in selling a book, and I know that you caught a little bit of backlash from one or two people, and yeah. uh, you know I I was just like wow, um, but I too like I was two years sober and I wanted to do uh, a little book myself and it was just like daily. Every single day, I had picked friends uh, who, whatever their sobriety date was, what their favorite quote was or their favorite passage, and I was going to put it all together. And a girl walked up to me and she was like, how dare you try to, you know, capitalize on, on this? And, you know, and it, and it was like, oh, my God, you know, and I said, well, maybe I'll just give it away for free. I got really nervous, you know, mm. but I thought about it over the years. And it's like, you know, uh, Bill Wilson was not anonymous and he wrote the greatest book that we have the greatest tool that we have alcoholics anonymous and yes he did make money from it um but if i did not have these books to read yours the big book you know as bill sees it whatever whatever they are i love to read people's stories this is how I, I see something that I've never seen before and it helps to keep me sober. So I hope that you don't let too many of, you know, that thing get in your head too much because I, this book is wonderful. Um, I've learned a lot from it. I loved it. And I hope I'm going to put a link up so that people can go out and buy it if they so it choose, is. if they so choose. And so I hope that you didn't let that deter you too much. That's a wonderful question, a wonderful concept, because when I read a post from somebody who said uh, that you have 18 years sobriety and you're, you're breaking your anonymity uh, and the way that I interpret anonymity is the fact that I'm not going to say that I saw Tom, Dick, Harry, uh, or whoever at a meeting, but if I want to say about my addiction and my thing, there are people in Huntington, New York, who are alive today because I had the courage 
five, six, seven years ago to say that I was in a 12-step program. And these individuals came to me, were referred to me, and uh, going to meetings today and are alive who are on a dead end road. Yeah. So if I was private about my participation in 12 steps, we could have two or three more people not Absolutely. with us. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, you know, I saw I saw this quote. I love quotes. <laughs> Anybody that knows me knows that I love quotes. <laughs> but okay. I see this quote that said, you know, I recover loudly for the people who suffer silently. So yeah. I choose to say, uh, you know, I, I never did. I was always in, I was embarrassed or um, I, but I, I, I was more ashamed of what I had done instead of it, it wasn't who I was, you know, it's just things that I had done. And once I started talking about it, um, even at work, there's, a, you know, some people will come in and they'll say something and I'll get a little inkling that they might be struggling and I'll, you know, and I'll say, you know, not come right out and ask them because I could see that they're a little, but I'll say, oh, you know, I'm in recovery for, you know, eight, nine, 10, 11 years, whatever. And so it's, it's 11 for me now, but, um, right. and so they'll say, really? And I have, um, made connections and they've asked me questions and asked me to, if I would go to a meeting with them. So, you know, whether it lasts or not, I'm, I'm proud. I'm very proud of the fact that I'm in recovery. And if I could help one person, um, then I want to do that, that I want to do that. So that, that is service in a nutshell. Yeah. You know, one person is, is that's my goal or my aspiration every morning. If I get out one person, if that person's in recovery, all the better. But it, it could be just helping somebody outside the supermarket, you know, to, to help them with their groceries or Absolutely. whatever. But in the in the world of recovery, maybe it's something I say at a meeting. Maybe it's something my presence at a meeting may, yeah. may do something. And, and, and it's 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 a great life. A great life. I love that. I, I, I really felt a connection. I loved the book. And when I asked you if you would do a little interview with me, you said you would love to pay it forward. And I'm forever grateful for that. Forever. I thank you. Thank, you, thank so you so much for having me, Lori. Thank you so and, much. And, and continue to live your life one day at a time. Always. You're an inspiration to me. Thank you very much. You're welcome. We'll see you soon. Thank you. <laughs> Thank great. you so much. Have Very a great good, evening. It was a Thank pleasure. You. That was wonderful. What a wonderful guy. And I got a lot out of that. I hope you enjoyed that. And please go buy that book. It's really good. Really, really good. You will not be sorry. It's called A Saint and a Sinner, The Rise and Fall of a Beloved Catholic Priest. And I got it through Amazon. So Thank you, Stephen. Thank you, Diane.